Welcome back everybody, I'm Alor and today I'd like to talk about some techniques that I use trying to make artwork that doesn't suck. I made quite a few mistakes over the years making my game, but you'll find out about that soon enough, so let's dive right into the secrets of shapes and details. When I started showing the visuals for my game, Petrojuice Alchemist, I was glad that so many people liked them. But I also got some very specific feedback on how people felt it could be improved. Especially the top-down view could give a bit of a sensory overload, because there were a lot of details. But how do I get that right? I don't know the sweet spot between too detailed and too minimalistic. So I followed some recommendations on Reddit. Thank you Reddit. And my mind was blown by two videos. One by Neil Blevins and another one by Glab Alexandrov. Sorry if I butchered your names, I'll link your videos in the description. Blevin discusses the concept of primary, secondary and, wait for it, tertiary shapes. Primary shapes are what you see when you look at an image and squint. They are the basic big shapes. Secondary shapes are smaller and often make up the primary shapes. Tertiary shapes are even more small. They are the tiny details that add visual interest. There are two main questions that you can ask yourself when you're trying to improve your artwork. The first is, do all three types of shapes exist and is their ratio right? I, for example, was having so many secondary and tertiary shapes in my game that you could lose the sense for the primary shapes. The ratio wasn't right. As a rule of thumb, you can use something between a 1 to 10 and a 1 to 5 ratio between primary and secondary, as well as secondary and tertiary shapes. The second question is, are my shapes nicely sized and distributed? This means that all shapes of one type should not be of the same size, but vary in sizes. The shape's distribution should be so that the patterns created are not boring or disturbing, which is something that happened to me when making my game. A nice hint regarding distribution is that empty space gives your details room to breathe and that clumping details, instead of distributing them too evenly, is a good thing most of the time. So let's take a look at an epic before and after comparison of my game Battlejuice Alchemist. By the way, I'm glad you're asking, you can wishlist Battlejuice Alchemist on Steam, there's a link for that in the description. Mission accomplished, I think. Yeah, I guess it looks better. I like that the new look is more focused and easier to read while playing. Now let's get to colors. I tend to lock in the color palette very early on when starting with the project. For that you can use Adobe Color, which is free and you don't even have to download anything and just use it on their website. Color palette generators like that let you play with colors in relation to each other to find out what appeals to you. Complementary colors are very neat. Another thing you can do is extract colors from an image that conveys a mood which you think suits your project. I found a stock image of spooky pumpkins that I think is in a nutshell the mood I'm aiming for with my game. Fun fact, there is no green in my color palette. I was wondering if I could pull that off, considering my game is mainly playing in the wilderness. After some testing, I really liked the nightly look and I guess limiting my color palette this way was a decent choice. When you decide on a color scheme early on, one important decision is whether you want to have natural skin tones in your work or not, because skin tones only look healthy in a very limited color range. This is why you see so many movies go for the orange and teal look. Skin tones look natural in orange and teal is its complementary color, which is nice. When you have generated a color palette that suits your project, you may want to save the colors and manage them between your various programs. I use a tool called Swatcher for that, which is really easy to use and I got it for just 50 cent on sale. I'll put a link in the description. By the way, this video is obviously not sponsored by anyone but my sweet self. Okay, so let's put all that into a nutshell. When we're making artwork, we have to remember that there are primary, secondary and tertiary shapes. There should be quite some empty space to give the details room to breathe and the details themselves should be a bit more clumped together instead of too spread out. With regards to color, you can use a tool like Adobe Color that makes it easy to find some that fit together really well and you can even extract colors from an image. I hope you learned something watching me make my mistakes and if you liked this video, you may consider subscribing. I have all kinds of videos about game development on my channel. And if you think my game Battlejuice Alchemist looks interesting, there's a link to the Steam page in the description. Thank you so much for watching and take care. Bye.